pick up in real time, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they know. How are you guys today? What? Is the man who's been speaking to us the last few visits here, here with us? How do you guys feel about the rain? Rain. Yeah, it's raining a lot. Any of you here? Some of the gang members that robbed the train disaster victims? It's I thought I heard a yes, I don't know if that's what that was. The man who's been talking to us is here. Were you a criminal in life? I know. That was weird. Any of you want to talk to us? like a backlight on it, the temperature control, like if there are fluctuations. This is ROG. This is the one that we have originally started getting responses on and I just, I love it. Is anybody here with us? You can say anything. You can say the word worm. Not a masa. Charles. Charles, did they wrongfully burn your grave? So it was believed around this time. So this all happened in like 1876. They believed that if a soul, like if they had been murdered or committed suicide, that their soul was trapped in purgatory. And that in order to help release their soul, we could set the gra their grave on fire to help release their soul from purgatory. And so Charles Collins' grave is burned, the mausoleum where he's at. Would you like us to leave you alone, Charles? Like, if we were to, like, pick a topic to do, I don't want to say, like, a documentary on, but, like, full info, like, our investigation included, have the history, background, all of that involved with it, what would you want it to be? Like, would it be, like, a murder case or just, like, a ghost thing? Anything. The Cleveland torso thing. I just find it really interesting because it's like the only like well-known like serial killer case that's on like it's unsolved. Yeah, and, and like our type of area. So I think like what we can do is like the victims that have been identified in that case. We can always find out where they're buried. Yeah. Especially because it's like with, if it is actually based on Dexter, because I can't say that it is like for sure, but like it heavily looks like it. 
The killings, yeah, but it's not like, it wasn't like a vigilante killer, though. Right. Like, this guy was killing prostitutes, homeless people, like, people right. who were, like, in that time, like, deemed kind of damned by society. But kind of so were the people that Dexter was killing, except that they were just, like, killers. Yeah, those were people who had, like, slipped through the cracks of the justice system, like, weren't getting their proper justice, so he sought it out. Pull up the Cleveland Torso Murder, see if you can put in, like, Cleveland Torso Murder victims and see if any of them are identified. And then once, like, if a name pops up, then we can try it. Yeah, when you type in Cleveland tor Torso Killer, one of the things that pop up is Black Dolly. So. Alright, one, Edward Ed Andresi. John Doe, Florence Genevieve, Paul Palillo, alias Martin, um, another John Doe, um, another John Doe, another John Doe, Jane Doe, another Jane Doe, and another John Doe. Yeah, a lot of them were John identified. Doe, Jane Doe, John Doe. So... Florence, try putting her name in Google and put find a grave after it. See if she was given a proper burial. Because my guess is if she was, it would be somewhere Blood. in Cleveland. Like, unless they weren't from the area, but like there's Riverside Cemetery down there. It's a bigger, older cemetery in Lakeview. I don't know what other ones are like on the west side around where that was. The other thing I wonder if like depending on if it like say she was a prostitute or something like that like if there wasn't a family like we can look up more of the history on her. Like if you just google her name without the find a grave does anything come up about her? Yeah like a whole little history about her. What is her history? This talks about like her family life how she was a prostitute um, talks about like when she died and then you know like how they found her talks a little about the torso murder um, and then they talk about like how Florence was born in December 6th 1891 in Ashtabula County, Ohio Lawrence spent her early youth sometime around 1900 in Erie's fourth ward with her mother, Nellie Eliza Robinson Soddy, and father, Fred Othello Soddy. The family resided at 236 West 3rd Street. Lawrence's family on her, on her father's side originates from Patia in Erie County. Lawrence, her father, and other family members are all interred at the Patia Cemetery. Patia Cemetery? Okay, so Florence, her father, and other family members are all interred at the Platea Cemetery. Alright, so we gotta find out where that's at. The Platea Cemetery. So, Platea Cemetery. Alright, and then Florence's mother worked at home. Father freelanced as a day laborer. Her father's employment was never steady, which kept the family on the move. Sadie, the Saudi family was in flux, moving to Buffalo, New York, then back to Erie, to Cleveland and Ashtabula, Ohio, and back to Erie again. Not much is known about Florence's youth, ready for the records for the Saudi. Families are sparse and spread throughout three states. Um, by the 1920s, Florence is an adult, and more records can be found, which describes her as an alcoholic who had a history of abuse by paramours. She was a prostitute and her associates were at the very bottom of the social class. They were pimps, bootleggers, and prostitutes. She was also believed to be emotionally unstable. Around 1922 to 1923, Florence meets Andrew Lilla, a postal worker from Buffalo, New York. The couple marries and continues to reside in Buffalo for the next five to six years until 1928 when Florence tells her husband that she's leaving 
for two weeks to Ash to be able to visit her mother to straighten herself out. Two weeks later, having not returned home, she's spotted in the company of a man at Charles Restaurant in downtown Buffalo by her husband. Coming to get me. Was he coming to get you? The next night, she packs her clothes up and leaves their apartment. Florence agrees to a divorce and moves back to Erie in 1928. That same year in August, she is arrested for solicitation. Except for the arrest in two years that Florence spent in Erie was uneventful. In 1930, Florence shows up in Cleveland, Ohio and is arrested for soliciting. The following year, on June 14, 1931, Florence is arrested again in Cleveland for renting a room for immoral purposes. By May 9th, by May 2nd, 1934, Emma. Florence makes a radical departure from her normal pattern of activity and travels to Washington, D.C., where she is arrested for soliciting. The authorities agreed to drop the complaint against Florence if she agrees to leave the capital and never return, but she did. Ooh, what if she was messing with a politician and that's why they let her leave and they dropped the case? That's why she stayed quiet. Florence was surfaced and... Cleveland in October of 1935, where she is arrested for selling liquor. 1504 St. Clair Avenue. A few months later, in January of 1936, Florence would be would become victim number three of the Cleveland murders. So that was all around like prohibition. That's why like they were selling liquor, or whatever. Yeah. So Patia Cemetery in Patia, Pennsylvania. Where? How far is that from? 38 minutes. Fastest route, the usual traffic, it says 38 minutes. From here? <laughs> Do we go? If you want to. That's crazy that it's that close. I mean, we are right in Northeast Ohio, so it's not far. It's because I put in Platea Cemetery. It says like Lit Lockport Cemetery, Cemetery in Fatiga, Pennsylvania. So. so, what we're gonna do in the meantime is find out exactly where that's at because it could have been renamed like within the last hundred years, obviously, but make sure that's where she's at and like what plot her family is at so that when we go, we know exactly where we're going and we're not like on a goose chase. What about the other guy, John? Or what? Not John Doe, obviously. But what was the other guy's name? The other victim that was identified. So I wonder if he's local. Edward Andrasi. I love that when it says location, it says Jackass Hill area of Kingsbury Run. They were pretty blown back then. Francis. Where Kingsbury Run was off of West Third, now it's kind of like an industrial area. Yeah. I have pulled up pictures. I was like, oh, the murder does not look all that attractive. Yeah, I saw pictures too. Sorry, sir. That's rude. He died in his birthday month. When was his birthday? September 3rd. Regret. It's 51 minutes away. It is in Cleveland. What road is it on? I'm looking. Back. Rose Wallace 
is a this is app called How do you feel? Um, I have been better. Um Yeah, like I wonder like what transpired the day she died, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Because a lot of people think that the Black Dahlia killer was Show yourself. Was George Hodel. That's my favorite song from Frozen. George Hodel, I mean, he was But, like, was he in this area in that time? How would they have come to interact? It is pretty chilly. Well, it had got really warm for a second. Do you ever wonder, like, if you start speaking about somebody that's deceased, if it kind of, like, draws them? They're like, oh, who's... What's going on? What's good? Like, for I example, like if we're talking about porn, so what happened to her and I kind of like... It's like, hey, um, what a coincidence that you bring me up. I'm like half an hour away from you guys. Yes. She was 45. Hear you. I like, was fascinated completely by the Black Dahlia case, and I had a book about it. And then George Hodel's son, who was like convinced that his dad was guilty based off of things he experienced as a child, things he heard, he wrote a book, I think more than one book, about his dad. But I wonder if he's ever made a statement, like Spirit. thinking that. His dad was connected to the course of murders. Maybe. I'm just trying to think. I can't remember exactly what year Elizabeth Short was murdered, like when she was found, like what the gap was between the torso murders and Elizabeth Short. Like, I wonder why Florence was never, like, the different things that she did, like, her lifestyle. I mean, people were, that was definitely, like, a committable lifestyle. Like, people could just get, I wonder why, I would not have been surprised if at some point her husband was like, yeah, let's put her in the asylum. Yeah. I mean, it said she was mentally unstable. Yeah, but, like, back then, like, women were considered mentally unstable when they were on their period. Like, if you had mood swings or, like, PMS, they would consider it, like, hysteria, and you could be put in an asylum for that. You could talk back to your husband and be considered hysteria. People wonder why we fight for women's rights. Y'all didn't see the cows. I did. Go to Ohio and you don't see at least one piece of corn, a cow, a horse. You're not in Ohio. Because every house here looks like a farmhouse. Unless you're like in a city. It just bothers me that it's called a child. Why? 
wrong vibe. Do you want to play? Ew. Child time. So that's rude to you. It's just not what I want to hear. <laughs> people have like I'm sure many people have like tried talking to them trying to find out who the killer is um at least just I you can't tell me if there's like some popular murder case that people are trying to solve it one way or another like there's always going to be somebody interested in something but like I know a lot of that has been from like a true crime standpoint grandmother like Did it say if she ever had children, like if her and her husband had children? No. It just said that she was married to her husband, and then she went to go see her mom. She was not seeing her mom, she was seeing a man. And then the husband was like, yeah, no. And she was like, you know what, you're right. Edward. Be inside. Nice. Woman, Edward. I wonder what he was like. You'd probably have better luck researching it because it's like, I don't really. I'm not good with that stuff. We shall see what we find. And then go from there. Yes. Stop recording. We literally are about to. See on the flip side. 